Good morning, everybody. This is Victoria. Welcome back to another episode of Drawing Processes. Today, what we're actually going to be working on is Makima from Chainsaw Man. So this is the brand new Chainsaw Man illustration that I'm currently working on and also finished. So I actually get to share the whole drawing process with you guys. So you're going to see me how I sketched the uh, drawing and transferred it onto the Bristol paper as the final drawing before I actually start working on the coloring and all that stuff and you're gonna see me add color layers and how I gradually filled in the whole drawing and also adding the final touch-ups to make it a fully completed illustration. And for those who are completely new to this art YouTube channel, my name is Victoria and I am a self-taught fine art artist illustrator and I am also an art teacher that creates these fun tutorials and drawing processes and also drawing exercises and constructions to help my students and then those who love to draw and paint improve their drawing and painting skills. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Let's jump into this. So let's take a look on how I usually start my illustrations. So usually I would sketch most of my artworks first before I actually start doing the final illustration which is basically on a Bristol paper. So as you can see over here I have power and makima so I tend to do sketches in spurts. So I do a whole bunch of sketches together and then I would also do the transferring together at the same time. So I actually don't have the luxury of having a light table so I actually use the old-fashioned way of having a clear plastic board and then actually having the drawings laid on top of the plastic board with a lamp at the bottom to kind of act as a light table and do my transferring um, of the illustrations and drawings that I will color. Once I'm done transferring the sketch onto the final illustration drawing paper or Bristol paper, then I can actually take the sketch from the bottom off and then start doing some outlines and also light base colors for the drawing or for the character. So here, as you can see, I'm kind of starting off with Makima's hair and going in with the color red from the Crayola 24 color set and I'm just kind of like lightly layering the first base color. And I'm using the same coloring method I'm using so basically it's just hatching. Instead of using pencil to create shading, I'm using color pencils to create coloring basically. And it's very similar, like the, the motion of the hand is always pretty much the same thing um, depending on the shape so it might curve a little bit differently depending on what you're coloring and uh, and then you would just kind of layer it lightly and now we kind of start to work a little bit on the eyes now and kind of getting the outline because the color pencil that I use to transfer my sketches onto the Bristol drawing, I use a color erase type of pencil so just in case if I made a mistake I can still actually erase those lines and not worry too much of actually having those lines fixed when I do the transferring. So I usually don't actually use Crayola color pencils to transfer my drawings onto the Bristol paper. Sometimes I would use pencil. I used to use pencil a lot more though but it got really dirty and it was actually a lot more work because I had to kind of like erase everything before I go over with a clean colored pencil right so if I use the color erase um, or a color pencil that's erasable then I can actually go ahead and color with that first and then I would actually cover it with another color with Crayola color pencils or I would actually just change the line entirely because it wasn't at the spot that I wanted it to be so yeah it's uh it's a lot of back and forth and all that stuff but just layer it very lightly and always give yourself room to adjust and change as you please because having that freedom is very nice because it's a lot less stressful too and it just makes it just a lot more flexible while you're creating because when you're creating a new drawing and all that stuff 
even if you sketched everything out, nothing's actually set in stone, so you still want that open room and freedom to change things if you'd like. So I'll actually be working on the hair for quite a bit um, longer right now because the actual drawing process for Makima was actually 15 hours even though after when I kind of cut out all of the dead spots so basically what dead spots are is basically the places where I kind of go pick up my pencil or if I do need to do any sharpening and all that stuff then um, we don't lose too much of the time in the dead space in between but even after when I cut all that I still literally had like one hour and like 25 minutes of footage so this drawing actually took quite a long time. I would probably say a longer time than a lot of the other or some of the other other um, illustrations that I did beforehand. Like the chibi ones. Chibi ones don't take too much time. I think so chibi ones takes a lot of time because I have to fill in the background and all that stuff. But for Makima there was a lot of detail on that stuff and it was a lot of layering for the colors so that it would actually help bring that nice bright and vivid red color of her hair so it was a, like a lot of footage time and it was just layering the color for the hair so just keep in mind it does take a lot of time in order to kind of layer in all this color this video is more kind of like a jump through it because we don't want to sit here for like 15 hours right so I'm just kind of give you a glimpse of places where I'm kind of adding layering and then what it would look like after I added some 20 to 30 layers of color. So layering is so far the best way to keep a very nice, even, and smooth coloring and it has a gorgeous result and all that stuff, but you need a lot of patience in order to actually get that. So make sure that you kind of take your time and don't rush yourself um, because what I see a lot of students do most of the time is that they don't have that patient built up just yet so they're still in training and in order to actually have that patience is that as you do it more often you kind of appreciate the process of coloring and layering all the stuff out and um, the students at first would actually just color really hard in order to get that vivid color instantly like like it's kind of like I want that color now in a, in a way right but uh, but it doesn't look as good because you put so much pressure on it and it's always harder to keep it even because a it probably takes a lot of force in order to kind of press so hard so that you get that nice vivid color though but in order to recreate that you have to keep that constant hard pressure which it's kind of hard because your hand kind of loses strength a little bit afterwards so if you layer it lightly you can always add more light layers and eventually all those layers would add up into the nice vibrant vivid tones that you want so make sure you kind of build that endurance build that patience to layer everything in and at the same time when you're layering it's not with just the one color so you can actually swap colors between layers so with the hair for Makima I actually used quite a bit of different colors even though that is just a red colored hair I used red orange and I also used red for any darker areas and I would actually use the red orange to blend with the red and then if there was any shadows I would actually use mahogany, brown, light brown and also black if it gets any darker though but that's probably gonna be a little bit later because right now I'm still mostly working with red and red orange just to kind of like layer everything out and gradually building up that vividness in that color so I'm actually not adding too much shadows just yet so as you can see yeah the layering takes a lot of time so you want to make sure that you build that patience so that you kind of layer it and eventually the layering would do its own job and work and then you would have a very pretty and gorgeous color and end result so we just have a bit more shadows and also just more layers to add for the hair and then once we're done with that then we're probably going to move on to the eyes and retouch some of that up and kind of putting in more details into the eyes and also more colors into the eyes and also probably the skin tones too. So here mostly 
you kind of get to see where I kind of refine a lot of the things already because I already know where each part of the character is so now I'm just kind of going back just to make sure that the colors are a lot more vibrant a lot more cleaner a lot more visible and then that way it makes it look nice crisp and clean so like here I'm using light brown and brown for the designs inside the eyes um, I would say Chainsaw Man's design is actually really really interesting mostly what they do with the eyes like for example power has a very interesting um, eye pattern in her eyes so basically with Makima is also something very similar where she has like this not really like swirls though, it kind of looks like a renegon, but it's just yellow instead of purple. So it was super fun kind of playing around with that and just kind of adding those small details though. But uh, it, it definitely makes out the character for sure. So we're going to put in all these little details first and then once we're done with that, I think so I'm probably gonna work on the skin tone, yeah. So here I'm mostly adding peach, so peach is technically my base color for most of my skin tones. Um, I kind of played around a little bit when I needed some darker skin tones, so for those I would probably use like a light brown and brown and tan though, but I think so I... I think so I color a lot more of the uh, lighter skin tones than the darker skin tones though, but I would actually like to explore a bit more with darker skin tones just to see what I can actually um, create and all that stuff. So yeah, okay, a little bit more touch-ups to the hair and I think so after that we shall actually start working on the clothing. So as you can see, it's a lot of uh, layering for the, uh, for the hair and all that stuff in order to bring that nice vivid bright and red color out and here I'm also doing a base skin tone for the two hands and after that once I finish doing the base tone then I can actually go ahead and add some shadows yeah okay and now clothing time Woo! so with this one I had to kind of re uh, outline everything with gray and that way we kind of see the lines a lot better and also filling in some shadows with the gray as well so starting with light layers as usual and then eventually i would actually kind of figure out okay here there's shadow here i wanted to keep it blank because she is wearing a white shirt so the shadows you probably don't want to make it too dark or anything you want to be a little bit more subtle not too dark um but not too light either because then it makes it look very flat too right and we also start working on the background. Okay, so actually let's start talking a little bit about the background. So this one, I also had planned something for the background. So it's kind of like when I did Aki, where I already pre-planned what I had in mind for the background. So this one is also very similar. So the idea was that I had like these chains in the background, which looked really cool. I don't know if she had that in her powers. I don't think so. Or maybe in the future, I don't know. I Because I didn't read the manga. So uh, in the anime, they didn't have anything like that though, but they, they did have like a lot of blood and she seems, she seems very godly. Like she, she seems like a holy being. She doesn't seem human. And I don't think she's human, but nobody has actually clarified about that just yet because I didn't get fur further enough into the story. But uh, but having those like symbolic meanings kind of helped express this character a little better and it made it look really cool. So um, there's like these red rays at the top that you'll probably see later though after when I finish adding a few more layers and shadows and also skin tone to the two hands. And then once I'm done with this bottom part, then I'll probably start working on the chains and then move up. So yep. And then for the shadows for the skin tones, I use light brown. And also, I add a little bit of pink just in case that the, like, the skin tone or the peach doesn't look too, on, too much on the yellow side because that tends to happen a little bit when you add just brown and peach. So you need something to kind of balance it out. So giving it a little bit of a reddish tint or a pinkish tint, I would just add pink to mix it all together. Yeah. Okay. And just adding a little bit more layers to the tie so that it brings out that nice strong contrast and also the end tip of her braid. 
Yeah, that one I actually have to redraw with the pencil because uh, the original line didn't work out too well, so I had to redo that and then color it in with the color pencils. And then here goes the chains. I'm slowly going the chains. I really do like coloring metallic stuff. Metallic effect or like metallic surface is really cool and it's got that like nice sharp um, and shiny feel to it. There is a lot of highlights on there though and also the contrast between the tones and the colors are very drastic so I guess that's what makes it pop a lot more and makes it look like a shiny metallic surface. But yeah, so here I'm actually going back with the pencil because I kind of lost some of the chains and also rearranging some of the chains because the the old sketch drawing, they were at slightly bit different placements. So I wanted to kind of change up a little bit so that it looks a little bit better uh, composition wise. So after when I'm happy with that, then I would actually go over with the colored pencil. So. If I knew where exactly where it is, I would go with gray first, sometimes black though, but I think so it's safer to go with gray first before you actually add any of the darker colors after that because darker colors usually just brings out the contrast a lot better, so yeah. But yeah, no, the chains were fun. It was a very tedious job because I had to go back and forth and just kind of keep adding all of that and just generally have a base color for everything and then after that I just kind of keep adding layers on top to make it a little bit more contrasting with that but uh but yeah okay so basically now here we are going to start a little bit on the top part of the background so that's where I mentioned where there's the red rays and I kind of like symbolize them a little bit kind of like as like red blood or kind of like red needles in a way because it's really pointy at the very end and it kind of goes up in a kind of like a raindrop shape so or like extended like a really pointy needle and stuff and that made it really cool because it kind of looked like thorns from roses but at the same time it wasn't exactly that because I wanted to have some type of like holy rays that were kind of in the background but at the same time I didn't want it to look pure either so it had like a tint of red so it looks like it was something a little bit more gruesome a little bit more um kind of gothic but not not really a little bit more like evil you know so but that really worked out really nicely and I really liked how I had the really dark background which technically I'm layering right now so this took quite a bit of time to actually layer because as you can see it's not very dark at the very beginning because I'm filling it in with light color tones and then once I kind of add enough layers there then eventually it will kind of get darker as it goes and then I'm also kind of going back and forth and retouching on the hair and all that stuff and also on the chains so here you can actually see a zoomed up version of the chains of how I actually would apply each little parts over here and then oh yes her eyelashes very very meticulous work <laughs> yeah you got to be really careful and you want to make sure that your pencils are super sharp for this area i mostly use the um it's like a reddish brown almost so it's not too dark though if i wanted to make it a little bit darker i can always go back with black to make it darker and mix it in with that reddish brown but um but yeah so we're gonna kind of continue tweaking and also gradually fill in the whole background with black so background's mostly black and then for the red needles i used red orange and a little bit of red because it is quite the uh the bright and vibrant red so i don't want to use anything that's too dark i'm not sure if i used anything that was darker if i did add shadows to those needles i would probably add mahogany and brown to it so but yeah yeah lots of lots of tweaking lots of tweaking And while I kind of start tweaking, adding just more color layers and all that stuff, let's chat a little bit about um, Chainsaw Man over here. So Chainsaw Man, I think so, she was like one of the most interesting characters, the one of the most mysterious too at the same time. But like she's really cool. At first, like I didn't know what she really did though. She seemed very kind at first, but at the same time she's like, she's like the, uh, the devil wearing, um, 
a skin of an angel in a way, but uh, I'm pretty sure she's quite the evil and uh, dark person, I believe. But um, but for those who actually know a lot more about Makima, um, I'm actually super excited to see who she really is and what she really is because I don't think she's human. Like, there's, there's no spoilers over here because I actually don't know whether she's human or not, though. But uh, yeah, she seems like a really cool character. She's like that typical boss lady kind of thing. But uh, but yeah, no, like the world of Chainsaw Man, I'm really enjoying it. I definitely want to look into more of the story and just kind of see how the characters develop and all that stuff. But I'm kind of at the same time waiting for the anime to come out. But at the same time, it's like, mm, I technically can start reading it and just kind of see there and like sometimes i think reading it is nice because you kind of get a comparison between whether like how close the anime was adapted from the um from the manga so how well they actually um stayed like how close they they were between the book and the anime so sometimes they're very drastically different it's heavily edited and sometimes it's it's okay or sometimes they would like completely rear off and it has like it, it wasn't even the story in the first place those ones i'm not too keen on unless if it's done in a very good way but most of the times it's not so but uh but yeah as you can see background is filling in very nicely i'll explain a little bit before we actually go back to um talking about chainsaw man though but here i wanted to add some floating well, yeah, I kind of like floating blood all over the place because she, that's kind of like her powers where she kind of controls blood in a way. It, it's not really like powers, powers are slightly a bit different though, but uh, just the way how she manipulates her powers and just squeeze people um, to a pulp. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I actually incorporated that because the top part looked slightly a bit empty and I didn't really like the idea of filling it in with all just black so that's why i added in the blood there at the top here just to make it a little bit more interesting that way and with the blood i have mostly used red orange red i also added mahogany and brown and also black for any of the darker shadow parts of the blood but uh, and also leaving out the highlights so with these type of um, areas here if there is a lot of white areas i would rather leave them completely blank instead of coloring the whole thing and just adding the layers later because there's really is no reason to color in the whole thing and just making it white again right so if it's supposed to be white just keep it white um and at the beginning and then you're good oh yeah no it's a i was happy that i added this extra little feature there because it made it a lot more interesting than just having the uh black there and i'm just kind of moving this down a little bit to the bottom part too so it kind of connects it's not just at the top there's some of the blood at the bottom too yeah okay but uh so that's pretty much that i'll let myself continue working on the background there and like basically later i'll probably just have to fill in the uh the dark spots a little bit more and just continue adding layers and slowly closing in um to the center and just uh, making all of that going um getting darker and going in a little bit more but uh what were we at for uh, chainsaw man i think we were talking about like Makima being really cool though, but uh, but yeah, no, it was actually really funny though because uh, when I was actually drawing her and as her hair got a lot redder, I was like, wow, she's got like really, really red hair. And um, it's actually funny though because when you're doing fan art and all that stuff, I'm really careful with what the original hair color or like just features and stuff like what the actual color is so i looked up a whole bunch of pictures and makima had like some different types of hair ones were a slightly bit more peachy and and not as red where the other one is like crimson so it's like a colder red and then where there's this one which is like a warmer red so with that as an artist usually you would probably want to pick the one that you probably like a lot more or what people usually know her for like whether she has like a darker reddish color or a warmer reddish color like definitely it's not going to be orange because that's going to be super off though but at the same time it really does matter depending on what type of lighting she is in so the hair color or any type of color that we see 
is based on the lighting that we're in. So definitely I would love to kind of explore a little bit more and also kind of play around with different things because there is no limit. It's nice to try out new things and not just kind of stay with the old, uh, the old kind of boring same colors that everybody's kind of using so it's nice to kind of explore and kind of try out different lightings so that you can actually create this character and draw them in slightly bit different colors though but like for Makima I don't think so I steered away too much from what the original one was but uh, but it's uh, just keep that in mind that nothing has to actually stay originally to how it was because that's what makes art interesting right because you can change it depending on what the artist kind of sees this character in. So I would actually be willing to redraw Makima in a different light setting because it's just interesting for me, right? Because there's so many different things that you can actually try out and create and then definitely changing the outfits too is also another thing. I'll probably kind of uh, I'll probably kind of fill in on that in a separate video because there's so much to that too and it's actually super fun to actually jump outside of the comfort zone and kind of think outside of the box, you know, because definitely art is a very open and also gray area so you can technically do anything you want and express a lot of different things, right? But uh, at the same time you want to kind of see whether if it matches with what you want to create too. So it definitely has to do with uh, what the artist wants to express and show. Yeah, so you shouldn't be afraid to kind of try out new versions of existing characters and then let alone like this is for like fan art, right? So if you were creating your own OC, then you can actually even go all out and just uh, have fun and playing around and also discover, explore and try out new things because experimenting is the key to actually uncovering new things and discovering new things because if you don't try it, you'll never know, right? So definitely being able to open yourself up to trying things that you're not as comfortable with, but just kind of trying out just to see what you can actually create it out of it. And then sometimes, or most times, it doesn't come out very well, but like there's those other cases where it's like, wow, I would have never thought of something that would look this cool that would come out from this, but it was just like on a whim where I thought, it's like, okay, let's put this very odd combination of for example, blue colors though, but expressing that with a, uh, a character with red and warmer colors and just having that clash a little bit and just kind of see what what can come up from that though. But yeah, no, it's, uh, art is a very experimental kind of thing and there's no right or wrong. It just whether if you think it looks good some people will think it looks good but you yourself might think it's yeah it doesn't look as good so then you can always change because you are the artist so you get to choose what you want to express within your own art and then regardless of like if people like it or not then that really depends on you as an artist too so would you rather kind of have your opinion count more or do, it doesn't matter when um, other people think whether if it's good or not. But uh, yeah, feel free to kind of open yourself up and to kind of express and try out new things because it's, it's nice to be outside of the comfort zone and I kind of learned that over the years of trying things that were like, okay, I don't think that would look very good and you kind of kind of follow the uh, the status quo and then you just there's nothing exciting anymore, you know? So that's why you want to kind of try out something new just to kind of see, okay, this is pretty cool. What happens if I add something like this? And that's also why we also do test outs and draft or color studies before we actually start doing the original one because it does take quite a bit of planning in order to create something really cool and amazing. So yeah, it is just a long process through that. And I'll definitely probably make a video about that as well because it's an interesting subject right because some people have trouble learning how to actually take the steps in order to create something like that so i'll probably kind of create some tutorials about how to start and create a new complete composition of um of an artwork and also what colors to make and how everything is placed and all that stuff so that would be pretty interesting Yep. 
Okay, yeah, I think I just added like a few more eyelashes for Makima. She looks so pretty. <laughs> yeah. Like I would say Chainsaw Man's like a balance. I really like the designs because they look super cool and I just have a thing for characters in suits. They just look super awesome. And definitely there are the more plainer looking characters. Like I find Denji very plain. I'm sorry for all those Denji fans though, but yeah, like as a as a just like a human appearance, he looks kind of plain. He doesn't look super crazy pretty, not like Aki. I am a big Aki fan, so but uh but Denji's coming up soon along with Power as new Chainsaw Man drawings and illustrations. So I hope you guys enjoy that. But uh, for now, Makima is going to be completed. And I think so. I, I'm only drawing four new Chainsaw Mans at the, for, like, for the time being so that I can actually make it for the convention though. But, uh, but uh, later on as I kind of discover more characters I will draw more because there's that other angel dude that's pretty cool and it was kind of funny though because I thought that person was also the same person as Makima but they're actually two different <laughs> two different characters actually so <laughs> okay so adding some last few details for the eyes and kind of adding some shadows um, on the white of the eye and then just kind of finishing up some final touches so yeah it was a lot of going back onto the hair because I want to make sure that we get that nice vibrant color to stay and also adding a, a little bit of shadow so that it doesn't look too flat or anything but uh, but yeah it's coming along really nicely I think so this is probably one of my favorite um, also another second second favorite for Chainsaw Man drawings so because it turned out really nice and I really like how I added a little bit more than just the simple background because I'm working towards to having more story in my illustration so it's not just the person standing there there's more to it so it, it, it makes it a lot more interesting to look at right so Just a bit more touch-ups and then now we are ready to add our final highlights and all that stuff. So basically now we're going to go ahead and use our Dr. Peach Martin white ink to add the highlights on the eyes, on the nose, and also on the lips, and also on the, uh, the blood areas where we needed that super nice glossy uh, sheen onto it so that makes it look really nice though but uh, yeah and after this it's pretty much it for Makima so I hope you guys enjoyed this brand new video uh, it was a really fun drawing to kind of complete and create and finish as well because there was quite a bit I learned from this one is to just kind of have fun a little bit with the composition and story behind the character instead of just having a plain background to it though and it definitely it was nice to actually color a really really red haired like a, this is like a true redhead like <laughs> I don't think so anybody could actually have this type of color of hair like naturally this has to be dyed though but uh but yeah no it was nice to draw a fully red um like uh red haired character again because it was uh it was getting brighter and brighter as i colored it and i was like wow this is really red i don't think so i've colored in or drew any characters with red hair but i was mistaken i think so it's been a while since i actually drew somebody with red hair but it was nice and refreshing to kind of go back and kind of um drawing this brand new character though but yeah so i hope you guys learned some few new tips about coloring and then also how to start off an illustration and also how to kind of transfer the sketch onto the final drawing slash bristol paper and that way you can actually finish off your completed illustrations on the good paper so yep that's it for today and if you guys love this video, please remember to subscribe to this our YouTube channel to get the latest update on new drawing processes or drawing tutorials or art tutorials coming up soon. And also please do click the like button and also please feel free to comment below and ask questions. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. So yeah, yay! And if you would like more drawing exercises like this, I do have more on my Patreon, so feel free to check those out. 
You can get more coloring pages like these when you sign up for Learning Fuzz tier or Student Fuzz tier, and then there's so many more drawing exercises on there too. There's hatching exercises, there's drawing constructions, there's step-by-step -step process, and also you can vote on other subjects or themes that you would like to learn about drawing or painting. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. So yeah. Oh, also make sure to check out Animathon because I will be at the convention this year. So Animathon 2023 is going to be in July. So make sure to get tickets for that convention. I'll be more than happy to meet you guys. I'll have a table there. I don't have the number for the table yet, just yet because they're still working on it. It's in July. So we're April right now. So we got like three more months though, but it's nice to be prepared. And I just wanted to kind of shout out to you guys so that I would be there. So if you like to come meet me or kind of greet me and kind of ask me questions in person that would be super cool super awesome so you guys are more than welcome and I'm also waiting on news about the workshop as well so we'll see what happens with that but uh, other than that thank you again so much for watching this week's brand new drawing process video and then there's so much more coming out too there's more Genshin Impact, there's more Chainsaw Man, there's more Spikes Family, I still have like one more Spikes Family to finish, and then after that there's gonna be other new series, also I would start sharing some of my OCs too, so I'm super excited for that. But uh, thank you again so much, and I hope you guys enjoy your week, enjoy your wonderful day, and then enjoy your beautiful month, but I'll definitely see you guys again next week with a brand new drawing tutorial, because I think I'm gonna probably release Mario mushroom construction next week though but uh, and after that there's also gonna be a brand new um, drawing tutorial that's coming out soon so I hope you guys are super excited about that one we're kind of going into a little bit uh, something a little bit different so yeah okay awesome have fun you guys stay creative have fun practicing and yeah I shall see you next time take care have a wonderful day bye